Hey everyone, welcome back to Rose Stops Bank Stuff. We have got my final empties video of 2020. It's obviously 2021 when I am filming this um, and posting it. It's the 1st of January today, hoping to get it edited and up like tomorrow basically. So hopefully you're seeing this on the 2nd or maybe like 3rd of January. But this is my final empties video. And then I'm gonna do my admin and my totals and do my 2020 makeup rehab wrap up basically to see if I have met my goals that I set out in my makeup rehab plans video. So yeah, let's uh, get on through this load of stuff. And we do have a cat in the background. So if there are any strange noises, blame her. <laughs> Okay, kicking us off, we've got four makeup empties. The first one is a foundation from L'Oreal. It's their infallible 24 hour foundation and that was worth $12.79 towards my reverse rouge. So that is this one here, which is finished. You obviously can only kind of see at the sides and stuff, but no more is coming out of this. So I wear it in the shade 015 and I really really like this foundation. This was a repurchase. Obviously it's drugstore so it's a good price point and I definitely would continue to repurchase it. I've got other foundations I'm going to work my way through. Ultimately I think this is probably the one I'm going to go back to. I really like NARS Sheer Glow as well and I feel like the two are kind of compatible. It's got really good coverage. I didn't used to find that this stayed for all it's called infallible. I found it used to kind of slide off my face if I didn't use the setting spray with it but I feel like as my skin has changed and got a little bit less oily um, that's not so much of an issue. I do also have the matte version of this which I haven't finished. I'm hoping to finish it in 2021 actually but I don't like the matte one as much although I've got oily skin I feel like the matte one kind of sinks into pores and things whereas I feel like because this one is just that little bit more moisturising it kind of glides over texture and stuff like that a little bit more forgivingly than the matte version. This is the one I would repurchase. Even though I'm still on the oilier side as far as skin types go I would repurchase this one and I do find it lasts better than it used to, but that's obviously more to do with the changes in my skin than it is to do with the foundation. I used up an under eye corrector by Maybelline, it's the Eraser Eye Brightener, and that was worth $9.79 towards my Reverse Rouge. I definitely would repurchase this one. I've got the Bobbi Brown one now to finish before I have to consider what one I'll repurchase, but I would be quite happy purchasing this again. Again, obviously it's more budget friendly than the Bobbi Brown one or the MAC one, which is what I'd finished before I moved on to this. I like that it's liquid. I, I feel like it's quite forgiving under my eyes. Although I'm oily, like, I have, like, quite sunken eyes, so my under eyes are a huge problem for me. Um, well, they're not a huge problem in the grand scheme of life, but in terms of, like, cosmetic problems, they are my main kind of thing that annoy me. So my eye shape is basically prone to lines, wrinkles, darkness, etc. All all the things you don't want around your eyes. But I feel like this formula is quite forgiving. Like obviously to an extent anything around your eyes kind of sinks into the fine lines but kind of more forgiving than others. Next up I finished the iconic YSL Touche Eclat. This was worth $42 towards my reverse rouge. I have another one of these which I'm obviously hoping to also use up. I'm kind of hoping I might use it up in 2021. I used to buy this religiously but I feel like now there's just because I use this under my eyes but under concealer so I'd use it because it is kind of a highlighter but the shade of it's not right for a highlighter for my face I would almost use this as a corrector but it's not got as much pigment as say the likes of this as a corrector and I feel like although it's obviously got that kind of light reflecting in it probably in comparison to when this was originally developed there are more formulas on the market that offer that anyway I feel like this combined with like NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer kind of does what this did and then needed concealer as well does that make sense so yeah I finished this first and then I finished this one side finish this so I kind of used that in place of it even though it's not technically a corrector yeah I just feel like it's fine but in terms of what I'm using it for that are now other products. So although over the years I have bought so many of, like I started buying this when I was about 12, spent thousands probably over my lifetime buying this. I feel like once I use up the other one that I've got, it's not a product I'll bring back into my life. And then the last makeup item is a mascara by Chanel. It's the Le Volume Stretch de Chanel and it was worth $5.83 towards my reverse rouge. In my last empties, I showed you the Chanel Inimitable Mascara. And this one, although it's, it's more volumizing, it's a much fatter brush. I was saying in my last empties that I quite like, like a thin brush that sort of really picks up 
individual lashes and pulls them out because I've got hooded eyes so I kind of don't like volume's not my main thing but I feel like this one so there can you see this is still like a really sort of thin like plasticky brush but it's thicker so it did give a little bit more volume than the other one but it still really felt like it sort of separated my individual lashes I know there's like stuff coming off with that but it's not enough to like like when I've been using it on my eyelashes it's not enough to actually like apply my mascara with anymore but yeah generally I really like Chanel mascaras I don't feel that they're a brand that gets kind of spoken about for mascaras you know there's certain brands that I feel like everyone sort of knows do good mascara and nobody really mentions Chanel in amongst it but I really really like the Chanel mascaras actually so I would definitely definitely get this although I probably did prefer just the standard inimitable one that I had in my last empties video. They were four makeup empties worth $70.41 towards my reverse rouge. I've got three hair care products in this empties so two shampoos which yeah I'm quite proud of. I've spoken before about how I only wash my hair like once a week so it actually takes me ages to get through shampoos but I finished up two. The first one is the Davines Alchemic Shampoo in the shade for copper hair so this one was worth $27 towards my reverse rouge. I don't actually like this shampoo very much. It does that thing where it feels quite dry in your hair if that makes any sense. It makes your hair feel like a little bit stringy and kind of like it's in desperate need of conditioner for you to be able to put your fingers through it. I don't love this. I love the mask that corresponds with this, um, as in the conditioner. Sans has had enough of listening to me, but I'm not a massive fan of the shampoo, so I will not repurchase it. Worth $24.24. I finished up this shampoo. It's from Kerastase and it's their Solai range, so it's their Sun range. So as you can see, I had this in a sort of little mini project where I was measuring it. Um, again, that project was... I was posting that over on my Instagram, which is at Rose Keats Makeup Rehab, if you want to follow that kind of content, which is more about trying to use things up and using what I've got and stuff. And then my kind of normal Instagram is at Rose Keats, which is more where I post rubbish, like what I'm having for lunch and whatever. So um, yeah, those are my Instagrams, if you want to go follow me there. I finished up this as part of a project that I was doing on Instagram. I did like it, but obviously it's a range for when you've been in the sun, which I live in Scotland, so it doesn't happen particularly often. It's not like I live in a country where hair is being bleached all the time, um, so I don't think this is a big enough kind of concern for me that I would specifically buy the, into this range again. And to round off three hair care products that I would not repurchase is this Amika Dry Shampoo. This was worth $3.54 and this is one of these mousse dry shampoos. I thought my hair looked really greasy when I used it. It, it did not absorb anything as far as I could tell. I tried it both during the day to like see if it would have an instant effect. I tried using it before I went to sleep at night so that I would hopefully wake up and you know over the, the evening it would have absorbed excess oil and things but that did not happen. It's definitely not for me. I didn't find it effective in the slightest. Really nothing more to say about that. Three hair care products worth $54.78 altogether towards my reverse rouge. Okay so moving on to skincare which is as always the bulk of my empties. The first thing I've used up is this Origins Original Skin Cleansing Makeup Jelly. So this was a makeup remover used straight onto dry skin and then you know emulsify and rinse off which was worth $23 towards my reverse rouge. I really really like this. It didn't irritate my eyes, it took all my makeup off and it didn't dry my skin out so I would 100% repurchase this. I decided not to. That was my last makeup remover and basically when I finished this the Space NK gift with purchase was on. I bought a makeup remover, vitamin C serum and SPF from Space NK specifically which Origins doesn't stock there um, because I knew there was a few things I wanted for Christmas from there so when I had paid for my replacements and my gran got me a few things for Christmas um, I got the gift with purchase from Space NK so that was my reason for replacing my makeup remover with the Drunk Elephant one it was really just that I wanted one from Space NK to qualify for the gift with purchase amount um, but I would definitely go back to this. I really, really like this one. I finished up this Kiehl's Clearly Corrective Essence. This was worth $9.20. I probably wouldn't repurchase this. I didn't think it did anything bad for my skin, but kind of one of those products that I didn't really think it did anything for my skin. I had a kind of iridescence through it that kind of did add a little bit of a glow to your skin, but as soon as you put makeup on, you were covering it anyway. So yeah, 
didn't love this one. When I went to Kiehl's to get my iris essence, I got this, um, it was a deluxe sample that I got when I was buying other products and I, I was asking basically because that was the first time I'd been replacing my essence whether this one would be better than Iris because this is, it's not that new but it was new since the last time I'd had to actually replace essence in terms of my no buying things. The sales assistant said in terms of like hydration and things that Iris Essence from Kiehl's is the better one and that was the one that I stuck with but they had the sample of this so they gave me it so I could try both but I definitely am going to stick to the iris essence going forwards. I just didn't really think this did anything one way or the other for my skin. Okay, so on to this lineup of serums that I have finished. Estee Lauder Advanced Night Repair. This was worth $105. I'm not going to talk about that one because I've spoken about it loads of times. I think this is the third one that I've finished this year. As always, I repurchased it as soon as it was finished. So yeah, I'm not going to bore you by talking any more about that one. Then next to it, we've got the Kiehl's Hydro Plump. I had gone back to that after using the one from The Ordinary, their Hyaluronic Acid Serum, which I did like and obviously they're two completely different price points in terms of budget and I would definitely go back to the one from The Ordinary, although someone did recommend the Hy Marine Hyaluronics one from them, which is on ASOS, so I'm going to buy that at some point in the future. But actually, I literally just finished this and Kiehl's have got discount on at the moment, so I've actually replaced this with the same product again. I do find it does a little bit more for my skin than a basic hydrating serum because it does have that sort of retexturizing aspect to it and I definitely feel like it makes my skin feel smoother and better than other serums do because of that retexturizing aspect to it. At the same time, in terms of hydration, there are other serums at a more budget friendly price point that offer that so I am not against them at all and I'm definitely going to try the marine hyaluronic one from The Ordinary at some point but at the moment it just made more sense to buy the Kiehl's one again when there was discount on it. One that I definitely wouldn't repurchase though is the Verso Hydration Serum so this has got niacinamide in it. This was from that Space NK gift with purchase actually. I fished out a few items and started using them before Christmas. You know if there were ones that I knew that I could kind of use to get into um, my reverse rouge for this year. So this was worth $31.66. It's a super expensive one to buy full size and I just didn't really think it did very much. My skin didn't feel drier when I was using it so I do think it hydrated it but I was quite excited about it because it had the niacinamide in it and obviously wearing a face covering lots of us have got spots to deal with that we might not have had otherwise. I didn't really feel that the niacinamide in it did anything to kind of counteract that. So I feel like I would just get the Ordinary's Niacinamide if I decided that's really something I want to add into my routine and continue with other hydrating serums because the RRP of like the full size of that product is just not something I'll be parting with. And next to it we've got the Dr. Jart. You know I've just noticed I'm looking at this and I've listed that twice on this so I've counted it twice. Um, but anyway so it's 4 25 it's worth anyway. It's not as if I've added loads and loads on. So it was worth 4 25 I did really like that as a hydrating serum actually. I really like the Dr. Jart liquid maybe more so than the serum but I've had the serum before and I've actually got it again because I asked for there was a Dr. Jart ceramide gift set on Cult Beauty that I asked for for Christmas that I really kindly got so I've got another one of these to go through now and I will use it up and enjoy using it up. It's for very dry skin which I am not technically that skin type but in terms of where my eczema is I feel like this Dr. Jart range is great for that and it doesn't irritate it so I'm very into it overall which was why I asked for the gift set obviously. Anyway, next to that there, we've got The Ordinary's Brightening Vitamin C Ascorbyl Glucoside Solution 12%. So this is their Brightening Vitamin C. I liked it. It had a bit of a funny smell, but really for the price point, like, could get by it. As I say, I wanted the Space NK gift with purchase, and I've been really keen to try the Drunk Elephant um, C Firma for a really long time. So that's what I decided to just go for in terms of my last round of replacements that didn't need to come from my budget. There's a, a spoiler for my 2021 project and the way that things will be changing. So yeah, I decided to try a more expensive one after I finished this, but I definitely would, would go back and try this again. I thought for the price this was great. And lastly, in terms of serums, this was another one from the Space Inky gift with purchase. is a little mini of the Sunday Riley CEO Glow 
This was 571. It was kind of technically an oil, somewhere in between a serum and an oil, but it was a vitamin C one, like a brightening one, and I did like it. I don't love oils on my skin, if I'm honest, so I didn't like it enough to go and purchase it, but I did think it felt nice on my skin, and it didn't feel too oily. It was quite a nice oily enough that you felt you had an oil in your skin, but it still absorbed in quite quickly. Not one I'll go and purchase, but if I had another mini, I would use it up again. I used up two eye products, the Clarins Eye Mask, that was worth $38. And the other one is from Mask Bar, and it's the Hydrogel Eye Patches, and these were worth $39. Now, obviously, I have been on my no-buy for years at this point, and these were just completely dried up, so, um, obviously, it's just an empty tub now. But these were just little eye patches that at some point might have been soaked in some kind of solution but I feel like they were dry from the minute that I got them and that's why I just kind of never really used them. So I ended up using these up in conjunction with this which I absolutely loved. I actually asked for another one of these for Christmas so that's how much I liked it. So it says this is an eye mask, I mean it's really just, it's not overly thick. I can use this in the mornings and I feel like it will have absorbed in by the time I've kind of faffed about. Um, I don't feel like it's a mask in that sort of really intense way. Like I feel like you could kind of just use this as an eye cream. But what I would do sometimes to use these up was layer this on quite thickly and then put a pair of these on over the top to like lock it in. Because I feel like in terms of sheet masks, like quite a lot of the time, that's really what's so good about it is that it's locked into your skin and it can't escape because of the sheet rather than because the actual product is a medical worker. That's how I ended up using these up was in conjunction with this, would not repurchase these, but have already asked for this again. I didn't feel the Clarins mask irritated my eczema. Obviously it's a French brand, generally there's a lot of kind of fragrance and stuff in them, so it might be worth checking out. I didn't, I wouldn't say I felt this was particularly fragranced um, and it didn't irritate me, but obviously you'll know yourself if you've got sensitive skin what tends to kind of irritate you. I really, really like this. I asked for another one, so I, I think that really sums it up. And when I say I asked for another one, like I absolutely would have bought this and spent my own money on it again. I bought it in the first place, but obviously I hadn't kind of decided what 2021's project was going to be. And when I first used this up, I was still in 2020, still on my no buy and re like replacing it wasn't an option because I've got other eye products that would do the same job, just not maybe as well as this one, which is kind of my whole thing in terms of me replacing things, is that it's got to be an individual product that I'm replacing that I've run out of. It can't just be the one, one that I like using that I've run out of. So I couldn't really justify actually replacing this as a replacement myself, but I definitely would spend my own money on it in the future. I finished up three moisturisers, two from Origins that were full sized, one Make A Difference and one Original Skin. So the Make A Difference was worth $46, the Original Skin is worth $35. I felt like the Original Skin might have been breaking me out. I was kind of rotating through, so I never quite was able to figure out what it was, but I'm fairly sure the original skin moisturiser was breaking me out, so I definitely wouldn't repurchase that one. Make a difference, that was a repurchase, I've had that in the past and thought it was great, um, and I feel like it wasn't bad, but I just, it was kind of not bad and not good, it was, just, I was quite kind of nonplussed by it this time, so I don't think I'd rush to repurchase that one either. I do really like the little one on the top, it's from Kiehl's, it's a super multi-corrective cream, this is obviously a deluxe sample size, worth $9.25. I've used up the full size of that cream several times. I really, really like it. It's really not for my skin. It's very, very rich. It's not meant for oily people, but my skin really likes it. I can't use it in the morning because it leaves me a little bit too oily to be able to kind of get on with my day, but in terms of at night, it makes my skin feel really sort of very intensely nourished. But without ever breaking me out or anything, it's just really that it's thick and it takes quite a while to sink in and to absorb into my skin. It doesn't harm it by using it, it's just not really designed for my skin type. But I really, really like that one so I definitely would repurchase that, but I wouldn't repurchase either of the Origins ones. I finished up my SPF, so this was worth $65. I really, really enjoyed this one. It's from Yura. It's their City Skin Age Defence one that's also got um, supposedly light technology in it to shield you from blue light, which obviously most of us look at a computer 
all day in work and then definitely look at our phones and things at night. Definitely into anything that might kind of help save your skin from being damaged by that. My intention had really been to repurchase this. I ended up getting a different SPF just because I wanted to get one from Space NK when I needed this. But I definitely would, would go back to this in the future. I really, really liked it and yeah, I definitely could see me returning to it. So really enjoyed that one, would highly recommend. Worth $5.20, I used up a little mini of the Origins Drink Up Intensive Mask. I really like this, I feel like it really hydrates my skin, does what it says in the tin. I've gone through full sizes of this in the past, I've got other minis that I will go through. The only thing with this is like my grand did use it and she reacted to it and she doesn't usually react to products. I've got very sensitive skin and I didn't react to this. My gran generally has very sort of normal skin that's non-reactive, but her skin did not like this in the slightest, so I don't know quite what it is in it, but it might be worth sampling first. And it's also got quite a strong scent, so that might also be something to consider, but I really like this. I feel like it delivers on what it says it will in terms of being a nighttime like sleeping mask that really hydrates your skin, and I will definitely finish up the other minis that I've got. I have no complaints about it. The next category is sheet masks. So I finished this one or well finished used this one from patchology it's their illuminating one i've talked about this before i think this is actually a really good mask and um, i feel like generally sheet masks are kind of a dime a dozen um but this one in particular i really did feel kind of has illuminated my skin both times that i've used it i had one and um, that i got in a set and then this one came in the the gift with purchase that i feel like i've mentioned so many times in this video um, but I was really glad to get another one of these in that gift because individually these retail for six dollars or eight pounds so they were worth it was worth six dollars towards my reverse rouge which is just maybe a little bit more than I want to pay for a one use mask but I did really like getting it for free. I probably will end up buying these in the future I think once I've got other things maybe slightly more under control. I feel like at the moment I've still got too many like normal face masks and like tubes and tubs to justify buying loads of sheet masks, especially expensive sheet masks. Because um, in contrast, I've used this. So this was worth $40, but this was for a box of 10. And these are from Leaders, it's the amino acid ones. But although this box was worth $40, and this is where sometimes I suppose like the reverse rouge is like not always that indicative of what you've paid. I got these in the mask bar in New York and they were buy one, get one free on the boxes. So I got two boxes for $40. These worked out being worth $2 per mask kind of thing, which is more what I would like to pay for sheet masks. But these ones, the Amino AC Free masks are so good. They really, really calm your skin down, but they don't. They're for like oily, problematic, spotty skin basically. So sometimes I feel like things that are for calming skin down can be a little bit too rich. Quite often there's a lot of essential oils involved, which actually irritates my skin. These I feel like really calm my skin down, but they don't overwhelm it. I really, really like these masks. So I would like more of these in the future. And then another calming product is from Simple and it's their Ultra Calming Sheet Mask. This was worth $2.99 towards my first Rouge. I quite like this, it was a one use mask. I wouldn't say it was massively calming on my skin. I felt like it was just hydrating and nice. I enjoyed using it. Wouldn't rush to repurchase it, but would happily repurchase it. One of those ones. Kind of just a good hydrating sheet mask, I would say. So yeah, perfectly happy with it. I used up a mini of the Lancer Caviar Lime Peel. This was worth $13.50 towards my reverse rouge. I really enjoyed this. I've got another one of these, which I'm looking forward to using. This smells really good. It smells like sugar. It probably smells like lime, which to me smells like margaritas, which smells like sugar, basically. Because I really only drink them at Disney World, and I'm sure they're much more sugary there than they are anywhere else. <laughs> this kind of makes me feel like I'm on holiday. It doesn't irritate my skin, but it does definitely deliver on the, the peeling and exfoliating. So yeah, very happy to go through another one of these in the future. Next up, I've got two foot products. First of all, another one of the OK Foot Peels. Again, if you've watched like any of my empties videos this year, I feel like there's been one in pretty much every empties video. Although I will say, I didn't feel this one was as good as the apple one. It's the same brand, but this is the watermelon and citrus one. And the last one I had was the apple. And I felt like the last one was more effective. But I also don't know if that's because I'm now in a sort of routine of having used these regularly. Maybe I'm like, maybe I was more underwhelmed by this one. Whereas in the, f the first couple of times I've used them, it's been such a massive change that I've been like, oh my God, this is amazing. Um, 
but I'm going to buy the Apple one again to replace this one to see if the Apple one is actually better or if my feet just maybe are better so there's maybe just less dramatic change but I really really like these and then in terms of foot cream I used this one so that was worth $8 towards my reverse rouge and this is worth $7.49 by a brand called Gold Bond. I bought it in New York when my feet were were sore and tired um, because it said it was a, th or no I think I bought it in Florida actually, um, because it said it was a therapeutic foot cream that was like cooling and relieving. Um, so yeah, I don't really know anything about the brand. I feel like I got it in like CVS or Walmart or something, like it wasn't a fancy place that I bought it. But I did actually like it and I would, <laughs> I would use it again. It delivered on what it said, it was very cooling and soothing, very thick, very moisturising, um, absolutely no complaints. I've said before, but I feel like I've spent more money on foot creams in the past, but I feel like since I introduced the peels, even this one, which I didn't think was as effective as the other one, but it was still effective and my feet definitely still peeled, I feel like exfoliating my feet is like the main thing and now I can use just like bog standard drugstore foot cream and it's fine because it's actually going on skin that just needs basic foot cream, whereas I feel like in the past I've been probably really needing to use like an exfoliator and peel my feet and then wondering why my foot cream wasn't soaking through like, you know, 50 layers of hard skin. Think of that, that is a beautiful visual. To finish off this empties, I've got five sashi samples worth five dollars. I have nothing in particular to say about any of these. I wouldn't rush to purchase any of them, but I would use them all up again if I got more samples. Another five dollars to my total. All in, that was Four items of makeup worth $70.41. Three items of hair care worth $54.78. And then now I need to work this out. So it was five, nine, four, forty, and thirty-six, but I've counted that serum twice. The skincare once I took out spare serum that was thirty-five items worth five hundred and ninety dollars and fifteen cents, which means that in total this empties gave me seven hundred and fifteen dollars and thirty-four cents and forty-two items towards my twenty twenty makeup rehab. So this is the last of my twenty twenty empties. I'm gonna do a makeup rehab roundup video to discuss over a year how much I reduced my stash by I'll report back in that video but I'm very excited to be able to say that I've safely taken off an excess of $700 from this empties alone. Excellent news. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you had a lovely new year and I will speak to you in my next video. Bye!